Hello and welcome to 10 Lessons It Took 50 Years to Learn, Your Shortcut to Success, where we dispense wisdom, not just information or mere facts, to an international audience of rising leaders. My name is Robert Hossery and I'm your host. This podcast is sponsored by Professional Development Forum, which helps diverse young professionals of any age accelerate their performance in a modern workplace. On this podcast, you'll hear honest, practical advice that you cannot learn from a textbook. And why can't you learn from a textbook? Because it took 50 years to learn. Today's guest is Alan Kilfoyle. Alan has had 40 years in the corporate world and in private consulting. Alan is a qualified master coach and began four seasons consulting as a sole trader, largely specializing in career coaching and consulting. Along the way, Alan has also been an actor on stage and screen, skills he still uses in consulting and counseling. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thank you, Rob. Very nice to be here. So I, um, I, I suppose I should start by um, a disclosure to our audience that I've known Alan for close to 15 years, and Alan has, did help me through um, career coaching and counseling when I um, had a an unfortunate event in, in my um, in my career and I came back from overseas uh, where I was running a successful IT company and I came back to Australia and got a new position but I didn't realize that you could mourn for a job and I was doing that and Alan helped me see that so I just wanted to be open with everyone that I, I've known Alan I've used his services, and I, if, if you're looking for someone, I highly recommend him. Alan, let, let's just start off with um, a question that we ask most of our guests. Um, what was your first business lesson? The first business lesson, Rob, I guess, is make sure that you become excellent at something. Become well-known, become famous, set yourself up as the gold standard. That's your brand, and it's invaluable. And how did you learn that? Um, I learned it through bitter experience early on, early on. Uh, this is particularly when I was setting myself up as my own business. Yep. That you had to have a point of differentiation. Um, you know, you had to be something that people would, would seek or you set a standard. Uh, when I was doing recruiting in very much a cowboy world, um, I strove for and I, I reached a standard where people would say, well, if Alan sends across a resume, or recommends we see someone, we'll take notice and do it. And as I say, this was a cowboy world. That made me feel very good, and that was a, a point of um, my salesmanship, I guess. So you're, you you would recommend to any listener now that whatever they, they um, do, whatever they specialise in, to be excellent at it? Absolutely, and it, word travels. Word travels... Um, very quickly either way. I remember being up in Darwin at one stage and that's a, that's a very small world. And a chef said, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a go. And uh, if you do well, uh, you'll be famous next, um, next week. If you don't do well, it won't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, 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 I understand the point. Um, and I understand how it would have affected you had you not been... Uh, successful or, or excellent at what you do because there's a lot of things that I did that I wasn't excellent at um, but luckily from my my perspective I wasn't um, it didn't ruin me but if I was better at it I probably would have been even more successful more quickly perhaps the more other thing quickly. about that as well I learned at the same time you've got to be agile too things do change hmm. uh, keep an eye out for what's new uh, what's going to replace you? What else you need to know that you're adding into your quiver, or some you know you become redundant or unnecessary uh, in a very short space of time. So part of your time has to be spent on that. Yep. Well, let's go to the other side of that coin then. Um, what is it that you have unlearned in uh, all your time? So something that you fiercely believed in, and then you woke up one day and went, hmm. Well, maybe not. <laughs> this, I found this the hardest thing of all, Rob. Um, <laughs> it's a difficult one. Um, I've made so many mistakes along the way, so I'm not trying to 
pretend that I'm in any way perfect, but I don't know that I've personally changed an opinion vehemently on something. Um, I do remember things uh, as a young guy in my second job, 20 years old, uh, going to a, an induction day at a, at a government place. And the gentleman got up in front of all of us new, new guys and said, the very first thing you've got to learn is don't try and change anything. Uh, imagine how that goes down today. <laughs> Uh, I guess I learned very quickly also but something that I did try. You can't please everybody and you can't mm. please everybody, <clears throat> pardon me, all the time. So you've got to know when to walk away from something. Yeah, I I, I can see that. It, it is a difficult question to ask because it means we have to confront uh, ourselves. And sometimes, you know, with people like you and I, Alan, who, who have been very honest with each other from the start, um, there's not a lot of, well, at least in, in my experience, there's not a lot of things that I am, I, I hold so vehemently you know, rigid that I can't change. So, you know, in those instances, it's just a normal day. You've, 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 you're confronted with new information, new data, you change. It's, I, I get it. All right. Well, let's, um, We've had you. We, we've got you on because of your experience and your background. And so let's start with your list. Um, the first thing you've given to us is keep open-minded. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, what makes me an eight, a consultant these days is my background hmm. and so many different aspects of it. And I've learned from all of it. Um, they've all added up to what I am now. Uh, it's like weaving a thread, you know. Um, HR taught me documentation, taught me process. Uh, recruiting was finding a niche, fighting in a very competitive market. Uh, general consulting, got to satisfy a customer's needs. Open to see what's happening. Always see things through the other, other person's eyes. That's a very hard thing to do sometimes. Yep. You're so wrapped up in what you do and what you provide. Why can't the world see it? might not be what they want at all. Um, I went through this process in my own mind about a year ago, and I thought I've learned a lot from HR, et cetera, et cetera. And I realized later, and this might come out, that um, acting taught me so much. It taught me myself as a product. It taught me resilience, and it taught me the need to really carry through. So even lessons for being unemployed, you know, uh, needed a, a targeting short-term strategy. How do I get through this? What else can I turn my hand to? Ah, uh, God, I need another glass of wine. <laughs> but uh, being adaptable. I retrained as a, as a gym instructor at that time. You know, and That could have been my new career. So uh, all this is based around keeping an open or being open-minded and not being yeah. locked into, oh, look, I'm, I'm a this or I, my degree is in that and I have to do this. Exactly. And this... Um, comes through with my, seeing my my clients, you know, my uh, candidates, whatever they might be. And a lot of it comes through this in career development. Very often people think I'm an accountant and I'm a rotten one and I want to be something else. What else can I do? Uh, you know, it's not worth going to work uh, nine to five doing that. Um, but also opportunities arise. Yeah. Well, that, that takes you straight into your second point. Be open to opportunities. I mean, I don't mean to be flippant, but shouldn't, isn't that just common sense? Shouldn't we all be open to opportunity? Uh, well, that's true, but sometimes it can be very unexpected. Um, I had an interesting time a few years ago in my time as a careers coach, right? I met uh, a young Vietnamese woman about 30 years old, mm -hmm. um, and she was a very, very smart lady. She'd come over on a boat you know, with the family, she was a refugee. She'd missed out on some of her education. So her business English wasn't all that good. Okay. So I helped her with that. I helped her with a resume, I helped her with her, uh, applying for government jobs, selection criteria, etc., etc. She was very, very grateful. She then spread the word throughout her community. Metaphorically speaking, Rob, uh, on Monday morning, I had a line of Vietnamese ladies at the front door, you help Sue, you will help me, uh, to, to the, uh, the point that that was about the March or April of the year. 
uh, later in that year, October, November, in the Career Development Association meeting. Uh, I was chatting with a couple of the guys there and uh, I said, you know, what I, what's 70% of my business at the moment, I didn't know existed in April. Mm. So it's being able to take advantage of that. Uh, it was thrust upon me, I guess. But, um, but you were yeah. open to it. Keep being open, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just trying to to think back to my career whether there was any time when I had to be open to opportunities, and I suppose when I had when, when I came back from the U.S., I was looking for a senior position because that's where I was at, and I ended up taking contractual work simply because that's what was available. So it wasn't so much an opportunity, but it was more basically going back to your first point to keep open-minded. And because I was open-minded, I opened up all those other opportunities for contract work, which then led me to a the final position um, that I had a few years ago. Um, and it, it taught me a lot more and skilled me up a lot more over the last decade to be able to now do what I'm doing. So I, I, I get that. Yeah, you never know what's around the corner, Rob, and you've yeah. just got to, as I say, keep an open mind and identify it and then decide, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that one, you know. You never know one. what's around the corner. This, yeah, this happens. So uh, does your, your next point is be culturally aware. Did you learn that from your previous anecdote that you just shared with us? I've learned it from a few things. Uh, my wife is Malaysian Chinese, so I learned a lot from that. Right. Um, some of your people might not know Melbourne's a very multicultural place as well. Yep. And I was walking through a, a prestige store with my brother-in-law, who's American, and he looked around. And he said, "Gee, you know, if you if you weren't hiring Asian people to help here, you'd be out of business." That's right. Uh, and I had some interesting examples of that. To being culturally aware, well help you avoid making mistakes, mm. putting it in it so far. And it also gives you a huge advantage. Um, I remember a time, again, as a consultant, uh, dealing with a little lady who'd been made redundant. She was Chinese, probably about 40. Um, and we were going through all the various things you need to do in the career change process. You know, um, And I sensed something was wrong. Um, she went at the end of the, of the session, she went to the door and I said, no, 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 come on, come on back. I'm not politically correct, as you know, Rob. So she's this tiny little woman up, up to about my chest. And I grabbed her hands, one, one with each hand, said, come on, tell me what's wrong. I'll never forget because she gripped me like a wrestler. Her, her hands nearly crushed mine. And a one tear came from her eye and she sucked it back up again. I don't know how. And she said to me, I am so ashamed. I have let everyone down. Oh, I get emotional thinking about it. It was a loss of face, all that sort of thing. We'd been talking about networking and she was really had a barrier about doing something like that. And all people pounding on the door trying to get into the interview room and I thought, just go away. Um, and, and I had to give her that, that sort of lesson, I guess. But I, knowing where she was coming from mm. helped me in that. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting having uh, having worked in in Taiwan, Alan, as you know, I I understand the the cultural peculiarities of um, Eastern business practices, and it's if you if you're not culturally aware, if you're not awake to it, you come across badly, and. As you've just pointed out, you don't see, uh, especially if you're in a senior position, you don't see what your, you know, what your uh, attitude does to your employees, or you don't see the hurt that they have. And uh, you and I know a lot of stories like this um, from, you know, people in call centers in in uh, India um, not understanding the hierarchical structure that they need there and so the boss sitting in the on the floor with all the 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 workers 
just destroys that and they, there's no respect there because that's the culture of that business environment. So I, I get what you're saying. And do you think that it's still that way today, especially in Australia? Uh, and, and you're right about Melbourne. Victoria, or Melbourne in particular, is the largest Greek population outside Athens um, or outside Greece. Um, so, yes, we are a very multicultural country in Australia, but especially uh, in, in, in Melbourne. But back to the question, do you think that that multicultural, uh, that, that cultural awareness is getting more, um, is, is being required more and more today? I think we are getting to understand it a bit better. Uh, I think the, the basic natives being us have learned lessons over the last 20 years, last 15 years. Um, and they are now aware that they need to know things like, do you um, offer to shake hands with a certain ethnic person? Um, is it okay or should you not? I do a lot of um, reverse um, training in this too with, mm. with people. Uh, and they might be, you know, like the little lady, you know, lady Chinese, or a chap from the Middle East, um, who um, you've got to talk about maybe having a handshake, uh, which we find acceptable, and it's totally foreign to him. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I learned a lesson about with the, a young Middle Eastern boy with his parents, and I went to, to ruffle his hair. You can't do that. No. And we would regard it as a, a bit of affection. Yeah, uh, and and warming and welcoming, and it, it's totally wrong. It it is, and and it, yeah, um, I, I have uh, I, I did a lot of business with um, um, specific a African countries, and they they don't shake hands the way we shake hands. Their their handshake is very soft and limp, and yeah. to to us, we 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 say, "What's that?" You know, you. Why, why is it like? Because that's the way it is. Um, if I can share with you, when I was uh, running the American Chamber of Commerce, we would have um, postgraduate and, and undergraduate classes come to Australia from the US, different universities, and I would present to them about business in Australia. And the one question that was always asked is, and the reason I bring this up, by the way, is it's not just Eastern uh, cultures. It's not just, you know, foreign cultures. We're talking about a Western culture here. And so they, they would ask, what is the difference between Australian and American business practices? Uh, and I, I was explaining to them. And I found the best anecdote I could explain, uh, I, I could use with them was this, that imagine you're standing on a street corner and you see in America and you see someone, you know, in a BMW convertible, um, with a you know very attractive person, male or female, doesn't matter. With a very attractive person uh, in the in the passenger seat. Now the American would think to themselves, "I'm going to be that person one day." The Australian would think to themselves, "Wanker." Yeah, you lucky bugger. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, and that's the difference um, in in. in every culture so being culturally aware I, I do get it and you need in business in life in everything as you said you know ruffling a, a little boy's hair that wasn't business that was life and yep. you don't do that so understanding your surrounding understanding the culture that of of the 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 people you're interacting with i can see the importance of that absolutely true you, you said um, something a little while ago, um, and you, you, which brings me to your fourth point. You said you were aware of yourself as a product. What do you mean by that? <laughs> okay. Uh, this again comes back to something I learnt at acting, in acting school. And let me tell you, you need to be a product when you're acting. You know what you are, you know what you aren't. If you see yourself on screen, you spend half an hour thinking, running for the toilet, that's not me, oh my God, putting out the handkerchief. And then you realize you are. I thought I might've been the next George Clooney, but no, I could be the next John Malkovich perhaps. Um, and you very quickly learn what you can do and what you can't do. Um, it's, you, you lose a few things when you do acting, 
uh, you lose false bravado because you'll very quickly be found out. Uh, you claim to be something and you're not. And you lose false modesty. Um, and people sometimes think, oh, well, Alan carries on a bit, but Alan's just really saying what he is. Yeah. The old word of Popo, I am what I am. Okay. And you need to know that. You need to promote that. And I, I talk about this with people who are my clientele. Have a summary of yourself, a professional summary, which you and I know very well, uh, because people are looking for the snapshot and what are you? Um, yeah, part of the same point perhaps is what can you do and what can't you do um, in business? Um, there are three answers. Alan, can you do this? Um, answer A, sure I can. Piece of cake. I know that well. Answer B, hmm, I might need to bone up on this a bit or research it a bit, but yes, then I can. Okay. Answer C, no, I can't. But I know someone who can, mm -hmm. which is still adding value. Um, because um, if you get a chance, people will come back to you if you've done something well, and they'll give you first crack at it. Yeah. yeah? Um, it's, uh, I had an interesting time once um, a lady came up to me after a business meeting and gave me a card and said, I'll be in touch with you. All right. Uh, what they wanted was uh, that they were a group of very professional young women who were dealing with some displaced older males and trying to relocate them into a different industry. They were smart and savvy enough to realize that they wanted an old, ugly man like me to talk to old, ugly men <laughs> like them. Yeah. So we did that and that worked very well. So probably six months after that, she contacted me again and said, we want to do a presentation down at the Geelong Football Club, actually. Um, could you do that? And she didn't know that I could do presentations or whatever, but I got the first crack. So the answer was, yes, I could. Mm. And then there is C, and you mustn't bite off more than you than you can chew. Does that answer the question? Know yourself as a product. What you are doesn't mean that's static, because you're always growing. But know what you can do, what you might be able to do, and what you can't do. It, it absolutely answers the question. And also, if you take it, take that metaphor a little further. Product evolve. Your yes. uh, it, and if you know yourself as a product, you know your unique selling proposition to use sales speak you know uh, the features and benefits that you can offer so yeah i i do get it but i'm intrigued and i i love the fact that um the of the point you're making that from an acting perspective it yeah you, it removes the false modesty it removes the bravado because as you know I have dabbled in, in, you know, in, in, in that as well. Not a, I'm not a professional like you, but I've done a few little things and you're absolutely right. I remember, um, I remember that feeling, uh, of just being who you are. I still am. So what you're really saying, um, with this is be authentic. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And be prepared to be able to talk to it Yep. Uh, and be prepared to back it up. You know, so now you're saying something and then you, uh, you can't say, well, what you are, you've got to, you've got to show that, you know, don't just tell them, show them. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. All right. Let's, um, move on. Uh, your point number five, resilience. Ah, right. Again, learned from acting in a lot of ways. Um, Daniel Craig, who you may have heard of. Ma yeah, slightly. Actor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, I, you, we all know how successful Daniel is. And he said, I think 95% of acting is knockbacks. And that's quite true. So one of the things that you learn in, in acting and goes through to other, other areas of my life uh, is being able to take a knockback, take it on the chin, uh, learn from it and maybe come back from it. Um, I had a, a very famous, uh, well, an, an interesting time when I auditioned for a, an ad and the ad was to do with an awareness campaign amongst Jewish community for a thing called Tay Sachs, which affects Eastern European Jewish people. Don't know why, but it, it's in the gene somewhere. And uh, we did a, a really good skit. There was, I played a husband, there was a wife, and we did our stuff. We did it very well, I might say. Uh, did I get the gig? No, I don't look Jewish enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the only industry left that where you can discriminate on looks. You know that. Exactly right. 
But again, I, I tell people, and in my own business, you know, if you, if you get a knockback, take it graciously, try and learn from it. Don't take it to heart. The sun comes up tomorrow morning. Uh, and also don't take a knockback as that's the end of the story. Very often, um, you might have been beaten by somebody else uh, or another organization to a contract, to a role. Okay. Yeah. Come back to them. Yeah. Well, it's like, how's it going? You know? Oh, well, funnily enough, um, the other people promised the world, but they haven't delivered. Are you still available? This happens more often than you think. I, I, I yeah, I've been there and I, I agree with you. The, um, the interesting thing about resilience uh, and what you're talking about is too many people don't understand what you've just said, uh, which is, again, to paraphrase you, don't take it personally. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I had a, a, a candidate once. This was a lady probably in her 50s. And she'd been, um, she was getting sick of being knocked back. Okay. So she Don't got we all? Her, yeah. She, going for job after job and not getting it. Um, so eventually one of the agencies gave her some feedback, which she really disagreed with. And she came back to me and said, boy, I told him. I really showed him. You know, I didn't agree with that. And I said, you did what? You know, for a start, what chance has she got of getting anything from that guy again? Yep. Just, it's, it's just nonsense. And um, who knows, you know, as we said, things can change. A month later, she could have been re-offered something. But you, know, you just got to get up in the morning and um, no, no matter how well you market yourself or how good you are, you're going to get a big percentage of, uh, of no thanks. It's all right. Some well, wealth, you know, you, you're, you're saying something, Alan, that again resonates. Um, I know full well that you, within your career, um, have had a bout of unemployment. You, you, you've, yep. you've been in a, in a situation where you've not had a job. Um, I also have been in a situation like that. And unless you adopt a different mindset, you, you are jeopardizing your mental health if you take the knockbacks person, uh, personally, if you, if you don't learn from what you're doing, if you're not following some of these things that you're actually saying now. That does affect your mental health. Oh, yeah, exactly right. Um, you, you get down into a little uh, a vortex, a spiral of vortex and curl up in a ball. Yep. And the world doesn't want to see that doesn't matter what's happened to you. You've just got to be strong and bust out of it. And things will break open. They will. They absolutely will. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I kept all my rejection uh, <laughs> emails and letters. And they, they amounted to over 300. Wow. So who cares? You, you know, do does that mean... Sorry? You could use them for wallpaper. <laughs> That they're all emails, my friend. But, <laughs> but yeah, does that mean that that I, as a as a person, am not worth it? No, absolutely not. It just means I didn't find the right opportunity, yep, and I didn't right. take it personally. And that, that's lessons I learned from Alan Kilfoyle a long time ago. There we go. What goes around, man? Yep. So, all right. Let's. Uh, we both we both agree on that. Let's let's move on to to uh, your next point. Point number six, which is again, um, something that's from your acting background. Yeah. And I, I'm curious to see how you're going to make this relevant. The show must go on. <laughs> okay. Again, as you say, from, from acting, this was from acting class. And uh, we had a presentation night after end of semester. A particular gentleman who was in charge of this fellow named Peter Sardi is very strong on acting, not so much in groups, but one-on-one, -on -one. okay. Now, a fellow came in to do this presentation and he, he, he lost it, he cracked up. I can't do it, I can't go on. Um, which left his opposite number, a young woman, with, with no show, nothing hmm. to do. She very generously and very kindly asked if I could fill in, which I did, and it was successful and that was great. But um, Peter really paid out on the guy who didn't, who didn't uh, follow through. He had a very good saying, um, and, and I think it's very true in the acting world, but also it, it has relevance throughout all of, all of your, your working life. 
uh, he, he used to say, if you, I don't care if your wife's run off with your best friend, your dog's been shot, whatever, all those troubles. You treat them like a hat and coat and you put them on the hat stand as you come in, and that could be coming into work, right? And you pick it up again if you want to on the way out, but the show must go on. People are depending on you. Uh, it could be your, your team, it can be your customers. They need you and you take strength from that. You perform while you need to on show or in business. And then you can, yes, you can put your tail between your legs on the way out and, and take your troubles home. I'm going to take issue with you on this. Um, and I, I have actually been in a theater where watching a musical where one of the um, lead roles just lost it um now i don't know what this this actor's issue was whether he had a you know a, a breakdown of some sort but basically came out uh, during a, a a critical climactic scene told us what was going to happen said he can't do it and walked off stage um <laughs> the musical director then got up and you, you with a script in hand finished the show so i i understand from your 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 theatrical perspective what that means and why but in life today if you don't confront um issues like uh personal problems and 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 those heavy personal issues that that uh, afflict all of us from time to time that is going to affect you in the long run and it's going to affect your performance in the long run as you know whether you're talking um in business or, or what have you and so just to pretend for the time being for a small period that it doesn't you know that that the show must go on so i've got to forget about you know my mother being in hospital and i have to do this i'm not sure how i feel about that alan um there's an old saying, in your own time, son. <laughs> I'm not trying to put your, your viewpoint down. I, I hear what you're saying. There's a couple of points on that. Um, mm. When you're on show, in, in the broadest sense, you must be on show, in my, in my view. I, I agree with Peter. Um, but that doesn't mean that things, that your problems go away. You address them again when you walk out the door. And in fact, if you don't address them, you're going to go into that spiral that you mentioned before. Uh, so it must be done. Um, there was a, another thing which might be relevant here. I don't know if you know, but I do some singing as well. And I'd, I'd come to my uh, singing coach one time and said, I, you know, my girlfriend at the time has left me, it was you know, really, really sad, etc. And he grabbed me by the ears and said, you put that into your performance. Yeah. You go, off you go, boom, that's part of it. Now, it's easier to do if you're singing a blues ballad on stage instead of having a meeting with the BHP board. <laughs> but I think there's some value in that too. Okay. I, I, I hear you. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I don't know if I'm fully on board, even though I must, I must again, in, uh, to be absolutely transparent, I do actually practice what you've just said. But but we've got a you know we I, I'm also here as an advocate for the listener, so Good. okay um, so let's go on to your point number seven. Be on top of everything, but yeah. don't micromanage. That's right. How do you do um, that, Alan? It, this is a learned thing, and I've mm -hmm. learned it from a bit of business experience. It's almost like double think out of 1984. Okay. You can't micromanage people because you will lose your best people. I think you know, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, the really good creative minds that you want around you, if you micromanage them, you might as well uh, say that they're going to go within three months or six months. You've got to understand what they're doing, but you've got to give them your head. But you've got to keep a, a big overview, I think, of what is happening, be it in a project, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. At one stage, I must admit I got lazy. Uh, I didn't keep an overview of the business that I was running, and I really paid the price. Uh, it uh, got into some real trouble, 
costly mistakes were being made and I was unaware of it and it reflected very badly on me. Okay. Um, so when I got back again in my new business, right, I put in place clear measurables, uh, what needed to be achieved and meeting with the people with me. Um, I didn't care how they went about it as long as they met those, those uh, achievables, KPIs. And if they were having trouble, they knew to come and see me, etc., etc. But I wasn't going to tell them how to suck eggs, as long as the eggs were well sucked. That was fine. <laughs> nice saying. No, I, I, I hear you. Um, I knew, um, I knew a colleague who had a printing company um, many, many years ago, doing incredibly well. Had some very large contracts. Um, and people like Microsoft and HP and all the end user license agreements. So you can imagine when they were when they actually yeah. sold software when when this stuff went in boxes, um, and they were doing very well. But he he left all of the accounting side of the business to an accountant and didn't keep an eye on what was happening because he wasn't an accountant. That's yeah. not the point you're making. Keep an eye on everything. You don't have to be a bookkeeper. You don't have to balance your accounts, but you have to know what the hell's happening with your money. That's right. Uh, in in this particular you know. instance. Yeah, sorry. Talk over your You have no. to know what, what you need to know. Um, and that's um, that's business savvy. Yep. Uh, some of it can be learnt. Um, some of it can be uh, learnt by study. Some of it can be learnt by being a very good 2IC somewhere first. And learning the business and seeing how that business works and, and but how it does. The point, again, that you're making, just to, to reiterate, is you don't have to be, um, you don't have to micromanage, you don't have to tell people. Well, actually, I like what you said. Don't tell them how to suck eggs, just make sure the eggs are well sucked. I like that. Yeah. I don't know if I want to keep that part in, but I like it very much. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on to, um, to your eighth point, uh, which resonates with me quite a bit uh, for many different reasons, but you can recover. Yes, um, I think we've both been through this, and I, I certainly was. Um, <clears throat> my business went down, I was unemployed. Um, I didn't know what to do, but I couldn't just sit there twiddling the thumbs. Um, and I trained as a gym instructor. And that was that was doing quite well. Hmm. Uh, I got um, I got some work doing that and got associated with a gym. The money at that stage wasn't that great. And then out of the blue, completely out of the blue, came an opportunity to rejoin the consulting industry. Um, someone took a chance on me, uh, and I'll forever be grateful to her. And and she said, "We want someone three days a week to come in and do uh, some business development, crack open some doors for us." And I think you can probably do that. I said, "Sure." So I started and two days later, she said, can you go full time? <laughs> we, we didn't expect to have someone with your experience join us. It was very pleasing, um, but I was back in the game. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, I was contacting some of the people that I'd been dealing with before. And it was, mate, you know, where have you been? You know? uh, welcome back. Can you get me such and such? Can you do so and so? So my sins were forgiven and my skills and experience welcome back. Uh, and the rest is sort of like history. I recovered very quickly. But it, again, it was being open to a chance, I suppose. Um, it, but it, it was, but it, it's proof of, of, of the lesson that you learned that, you know, just because you're down, you're not out. Yeah. You can exactly. get back up, you can recover. And yeah, Sometimes you, you need a hand, sometimes you don't. You just need a, a good set of ears and eyes to seek out that opportunity. Yeah, exactly right. And um, it was interesting how quickly that I was re-recognised in the industry. And some people that had thought I'd done the wrong thing by them, and I hadn't, but they'd taken things the wrong way. They'd moved on. They were out. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, I think well, it was a 40 parts difference. Let, let, let's add that to your lesson because I think that's an important point um, that e you can recover and if your downfall or, or if your 
out of it because of a grudge or because someone has come in and, and put a broom through the place and gotten rid of you, that's all well and good. You will recover, you will survive, and it doesn't matter what those people do or who they are or how long they're there because you've moved on. And if you, if you attach yourself to that loss for, for too long and start looking and, and saying, oh, they can't do it as well as I did or I was better or you, you build up this, this, this bad personality, this bad grudge and it, it just it doesn't leave you open to move on. It doesn't leave your mind open to understand that you have recovered and you have moved on. Exactly. I think you're perfectly correct. Um, something like that happens to you. You must, you must have a look at yourself. Well, what have I done wrong? What's through their eyes? Have, um, have they seen where have I let them down or where have I let myself down? And a bit of reevaluation. And then, you know, hmm, you know, pull yourself together. Okay, yep. I've learned that. But that doesn't diminish me as a person. On we go. So That's the important part. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm with you there. That is the real important part. Okay, um, lesson number nine. Now, this is something that is a well-duh moment for me, but I'm sure that you have a good anecdote to explain how what this means to you. You talk about teamwork as yeah. being a very important lesson. Brought home to me... Uh, in a uh, theatre theater group that I was in, mm -hmm. and you and I will both know that if anyone wants to learn about teamwork, they join the theatre company. <clears throat> we were doing a show called The Thrupp the Opera, which is a farce. And uh, one of the things that I, I played three roles in that. And I had to bring some, something on stage, which was a, a massive, massive uh, painting. And we had to, as a gift for somebody. And somebody had uh, taken this thing, which was far too big for the stage. And I thought, oh, gee, it had to be done at pace while we were singing and performing. And um, twice it crashed over during rehearsals. Mm -hmm. This is not going to go well. Anyway, we, we're doing the, the main act and they're the things sitting there rock solid. Um, and I'm singing and dancing and carrying on. I look behind me and there's three little girls from the cast holding it up with one finger each with cute little smile. <laughs> so teamwork. Um, it's... And, and there was a cast member who was selling tickets and just about killing herself with tiredness, but you wouldn't know it when she was on stage. Uh, there was a marketing company that I worked for. Uh, it was my first introduction to any sort of technology. Um, this organisation was working flat chat, mm -hmm. I'd say 100% all day, every day. Uh, there was about 100 people in it, very, very big group. Uh, and yet none of them were too busy to teach me. And I'd like to think that I repaid them in spades in what I did. When I got my business started up again, I built this into my business. Um, I'd seen in the past recruitment consultancies where uh, particular agents had got very jealous about different uh, CVs, etc., and kept them to themselves. Et so I didn't want that to happen. So I built in a, a reward system where it was a split fee, uh, depending you know, if you had the job and you had the person. And it worked very well, a shared reward system. Um, people actually took pleasure out of somebody else um, getting getting a placement. Um, Isn't that wonderful? Human nature, but, uh, uh, you know, the, the teamwork there was phenomenal. And we worked quite a few times on tenders, worked back till 10 o'clock at night, sometimes all nighter. And it was done with a smile on the face. Uh, and we, we built this team ethos, team success. It's, it's interesting, Alan, because um, you and I have both worked in organisations where they profess teamwork, and yet there's always one or two that will keep information to themselves. Yes. And, and that comes from a, an insecurity in their job as opposed to um, wanting to be part of a team it's not wanting to lose their job, not wanting to lose their importance. But they don't realise that by doing that, they are less important to the organisation. Quite correct. Quite correct. Um, 
Somebody said recently, um, try and make yourself dispensable. Oh, you must have listened to a podcast that we just finished recording. <laughs> In fact, that's what it was. So therefore, <laughs> uh, gone into my brain and will stay with me. No, I quite agree with that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I've, I've believed that for a long time. So if you want to make yourself indispensable, make yourself dispensable. Be part of the team. Grow. Do exactly what you've just said. Um, don't hoard things to yourself. Share them. Share your knowledge. Share your experience. Bring people along the journey with you. Make other people successful. And, you know, that's also the sign of a good leader. Well, that's that's true. Again, it really was an interesting dynamic the way it happened because we found that the the group then grew, you know. We were getting more business in. People were seeing opportunities. They took it upon themselves hmm. to put their antenna up rather than just doing their job. They thought, oh, this could work for Freddie across the road. Um, let's jump in there or get Freddie to jump in there. Uh, and it was really quite amazing. I mean, it sounds like a bit... Uh, airy fairy, but it's not at all. No, no, no. It's, it's definitely not. And let's let's just go back to your um, to your your you know, theatrical uh, anecdote there. Those three cast members who are holding up this this prop. If they weren't there, they would everyone on that stage, including them who may or may not have been on stage at that time, would look foolish. Yep. They would lose. By having them there, um, they might have felt uncomfortable, but everyone looked good and the gag worked. Mm. Yeah, sensational. It was, uh, it was just a, a wonderful feeling. You, know, you, you embraced them for that. Yeah, and, and the, the anecdote, the lesson is, is very well put and very easily transferable to life and to business. So thank you for that, Alan. Yeah. Um, okay, well, believe it or not, Alan, we've, we've come full, you know, full circle to the very last one. This is your, your point number 10. Um, I'd like to talk to you forever, but we obviously have a time limit. Um, so let's get on with the, the, the final point. Listen, learn, live up to. Now, this isn't a, a take on, you know, uh, eat, pray, love, is it? <laughs> eat drink be merry <laughs> <laughs> maybe that one what do you mean by listen learn live up to things that happened to me in my life in my business life at one stage uh, when uh, I was part in company with an organization um, they couldn't afford me <clears throat> and I was talking with a chap um, that I was trying to uh, grow business with and I said to him um, why would your company want to hire me? You know, like, uh, what, what could I possibly do for your organization? And he misheard me, I'm sure. Uh, because I, he answered what the question as if it was, what do you think of me? Okay. And he proceeded to tell me. And it was quite flattering. And I just shut up. <laughs> and I thought quietly as I walked out the door, by God, I better start living up to that. And in fact, that gentleman is the reason that I started my own consultancy. And I've told him that. Um, there was another instance back in the marketing company with um, my boss. Uh, and she said something to me that was a real, uh, a real conflab on. It, was, it looked like pressure was going to get the best of people. And she turned to me and said, Alan, make it happen, you know, like you do. And I thought, do I? Okay, again, I better live up to that. I better go on for that. Okay. Um, and the third one, I was given a great deal of um, kudos, well, not kudos, but free reign, I think, when a gentleman asked me to join in with his venture. And uh, he is very well known in the industry, and I had a lot of, do have a lot of time for him. And he said, This is the way it's done around here. If you want to throw it out the window, go for your life. Um, I'm bringing you on because of who you are, not because of our system. And I thought that was absolutely valuable. So that was listen, learn, and take it forward, you know. So how, how do you, what, what advice, let me, let me start again, what advice 
then would you have with that lesson um, for uh, our listeners who are who are upcoming in their career or you know maybe listeners like uh, my age who who are established how do we then take the the essence of that away and and do something with it i think you've got to do a little bit of detective work and it's not something you do every day uh but if you need to a bit of market research about yourself Mm -hmm. that's great to ask somebody you know um what do you think my strengths are what are my weaknesses Uh, or where might i fit this particular project that's upcoming what value could i add um, what would I need to learn to be valuable, et cetera? And take it on board. We were talking about taking things on board before. Um, you take the good as well as the as not, not so good and learn from it and think, gee, maybe there's an embryo of uh, ability there or something I could build on, something I could make valuable to people. Uh, every now and then it's worthwhile, I think. And it doesn't matter what age you are. So if we go back, if we go back to you are a product. Yep. Um, again, and I don't want to use the term brand, but if we look at you as, as your product, as your brand, um, a brand is a promise to the people buying. And if I'm understanding your point, do the market research, listen to what people think about your brand, because that's the promise that you have made to them subconsciously sometimes because of who you are um, and live up to that promise. Yes, absolutely. And also learn from it. Uh, if you're looking for feedback, and you should be, sometimes people just give you feedback anyway. And they say, <laughs> Whether you want it or... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but this was particularly valuable because now it might not have been something you even thought of or set out to do, but someone said to me, that was amazing because of mm. really that maybe, maybe I should include that in what I do as part of the course, or at least you know, live up to it. It's, it's something I didn't know, or it's something I just touched on. And this could become part of your core offering. That too roughly. That's very deep. Alan, that, that, that will take a little, that'll take a few listens for, for our listeners to understand. And I advise if you're listening to this, play it again and listen to this point again, because it's not as uh, shallow as you may first think it is. It's a very deep point you're making, and there's a lot to unpack. Um, I like it. I, I re- listen, learn live up to it's the live up to that is is the deepest part of this That's uh, listen and learn you you know how to do that how do you live up to it so no alan that's that's very good so we've come to the end of our session together i would like to say thank you uh, thank you for joining us today thank you for sharing the lessons that you, took you 50 years to learn with all of us uh, we really appreciate it and um, you've been listening to the international podcast of 10 Lessons It Took Me 50 Years to Learn with our guest, Alan Kilfoyle. This episode is sponsored by Professional Development Forum. PDF provides webinars, social media discussions, podcasts, parties, and much more. And you can find them uh, on their website, professionaldevelopmentforum.org. And the best part about it is it's all free. So with that, I will say thank you and we look forward to you tuning in to our next episode of 10 Lessons It Took 50 Years to Learn.